Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the wonderful things that are happening this weekend. Snow, snow, and more snow are happening this weekend. As we dive deeper and deeper into the hunting season, I got a little bit of news about chronic wasting disease and some of the places where if you guys are hunting, you may want to get your deer checked. So this and more later on in the show. Let's kick off off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 23 degrees outside. It's chilly out there. Your high is going to be 35, your low is going to be 26. So pretty much this is our uh, cold snap winter time area, you know, but you know, minus the snow and all. So we might be seeing some snow tonight going into to Saturday, but mostly it's going to be clear, mostly sunny for Veterans Day. Um, it's going to be the, uh, they're going to be celebrating the 100th anniversary of Armistice Day, which it was the effective end of World War One, But there's just a little bit of trivia. It's going to be a sunny weekend, but it's also going to be bitter cold, so you might want to dress accordingly. Uh, you know, sweater and shorts. All right, so in local news, uh, of course, I've always known that there have been ballots lost over the mail. No one ever mentions that, uh, too, because uh, sometimes when I put my ballot in the metal container, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere. Uh, I don't think it's going to reach its destination. But here's what's happened in the news. In Missoula County, 59,732 ballots were cast for a 69% turnout um, in Missoula County alone. In comparison, 2014, there were 49% turnout, so it's a 20% bump in voter turnout just for a midterm election. Uh, and almost about 68% in Montana's 711,000 711, voters cast ballots. So there was quite a ter big turnout for this election, and uh, it was a very highly contested uh, senatorial seat. Um, 1,321 people in the county participated in the same-day registration, and although it takes forever to stand in line, be processed and receive appropriate ballot. Uh, the work progressed smoothly. And of course, the ran at one point, the line stretched to about 300 people. Uh, and one of their uh, ballot counters broke around 3 a.m. And so it didn't get fixed until about 10 a.m. the next morning. So a lot of late last minute ballots were had to be uh, counted much later on, which of course, you know, Missoula and Gallatin County were among the two that gave Tester that last uh, 12,000 boost that pretty much um, put it, set it in stone for Tester to upset Rosendale in the very end. So that's kind of what's happening um, with the Missoula, um, but of course, you know, in the state, basically all the election officials, you know, like we, we can stop worrying about politics and start just worrying about government. Um, for another basically year and three quarters year when the primary starts happening in the summer of 2020. So we still, we got some time. Uh, Montana was also, I uh, just want to mention a little trivia note, is that yesterday um, Montana uh, should have celebrated or you should have known that uh, Montana uh, is 129 years old as of yesterday to be admitted as the 41st state in the union. Of course, Back to the whole big deal, you've probably been all waiting for this because uh, chronic wasting disease is no joke and it has been officially found within two deer and Fish Wildlife Park are asking hunters to have your uh, hunted animal checked if you hunted between the Blackfoot and Rocky Boys reservations and also towards North Dakota regions and Montana, Canadian border and all that stuff. There's also uh, some, um, also if you go to the Fish, Wildlife and Park website, uh, it's fwpmt.gov, so fwp.mt.gov, you get to see a map. And then on this map, the green area is current priority of making sure that uh, the spread of the disease is pretty uh, contagious among deer populations. And it, right here in this particular area right here, this is where they found the, the deer. And also down here south of Montana, uh, you also see some more uh, uh, tested positive as well. So. Uh, the two must be in the north and the south, so which is probably what it's all about. And there's a couple being tests being um, performed. And if you um, want to check your deer or elk for any, or any big game for any of this chronic wasting disease, SCOBY uh, during the first half of the hunting season, Glasgow during the tail half of the hunting season, Highway uh, 223 at the Tenton River, uh, they're going to be checking. Um, the last check they'll be doing is on the 11th. Malta. Um, Laurel, um, Montana, Chester, Montana, Shelby, Great Falls during their office hours during the week, um, south of Hall and south of Phillipsburg. So there's a lot of different check stations you can take your deer um, in these particular areas to see if they have chronic wasting disease. And of course, uh, chronic, uh, Colorado State University, who discovered the two deer with the CWC, CWD, uh, CWD says that there is no current um, convincing evidence that the agent could affect humans. However, 
for public health reasons, they ask that you stay away from and you should not eat the meat that co from chronic waste and disease. Do you really want to eat diseased meat? Just think about it. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Um, and a uh, tragedy struck uh, Thousand Oaks, California, was the site of a mass shooting late Wednesday afternoon. It was a country uh, college bar. Um, reportedly, the shooting was around 11.20 p.m. Wednesday night. As a gunman approached the bar, uh, he shot a security guard outside and went inside to continue fire and killing 12 people in process. Among the victims was 29-year-old veteran of law enforcement, Sergeant Ron Helis. Uh, police say the suspect gunman, Ian David Long, who is 28, was found dead inside the venue following his shooting. Um, Long was a veteran of the U.S. Uh, Marine Corps, um, and earlier that year, deputies who were called to his house were concerned that he may be suffering from post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. All right, moving on. Ruth Bader Ginsburg was hospitalized when she fell and fractured three ribs the other day. The 85-year-old Supreme Court judge fell in her office at the, Supreme, at the Supreme Court on Wednesday evening. According to the court, after experiencing discomfort overnight, she went to a hospital on Thursday morning. Ginsburg had used broken ribs before and continued to work despite the considerable pain, but doctors say fractured ribs are always a considerable concern in older persons because of the danger of pneumonia. Uh, for years, the question of Ginsburg health has uh, been um, um, kind of um, a big concern on both sides of the political spectrum. Um, Ginsburg uh, was originally wanting to, uh, they, they asked her that, they uh, requested that she would retire um, during the Obama administration, um, but one of the uh, um, issues is that when one of the Supreme Court justices left, um, it took eight months uh, leading to Trump's um, election for his first pick, uh, Neil Gorsh. Uh, of course, there's a president uh, for her lengthy service, as Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. and John Paul Stevens were both 90 when they retired. So those are some of the th uh, news items that are happening. You can check all this and more. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's always a lot of stuff going on. Um, so you can find out all that at npr.org. You can go to fishwildlifeandpark.mt.gov, FWP, and you can also go to the Missoulian to find out more information about all that and more. But here is where you can find some of the local programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. If you're interested in finding out uh, more about these programs and more, you can log on to MCAT.org. But here's a little taste of what you guys can check out this weekend of the cold weather. A million dreams for the world weren't gonna make that public media is going to be increasingly important as a trusted source for news for us, and that young folks are attracted to that and can find a home at Montana Public Radio um, is all I could hope for. Okay, thank you. Now you're usually in this chair. Yes. So how does it feel to be there tonight? I'm very honored by this. <laughs> uh, Jed called me and I had moderated the last two years, so I just automatically said yes, when, because I thought that was the question. Um, <laughs> and then he said, no, I think you're going to have a different role this time. Um, I don't, I, I would rather ask the questions than answer them, <laughs> frankly, uh, which is obvious, I think. But um, I hope to return to that role next year. <laughs> and we'll be pleased that you do. David and Morgan go, and you don't just go to the office and find a brown-suited car salesman and say, I'd like to buy a Toyota. You 
go to the car that you're interested in and you sit in it. But of course, there's a lot going on with the balloons and the music and the people waiting for the $88 car, and you start tooting the horn. So you're in the car, you're tooting the horn, the balloons are blowing in the wind, the ladies are dancing, the music is going, the bratwurst is starting to burn. The, these men are milling about for the $88 car, and you're tooting the horn. At this point, you are surrounded. Okay, I mean, it's like it just gets better and better. I said, surrounded by what? He said, you are surrounded by car salesmen. In the 1980s, AIDS crisis was full blown. Um, and this is a picture of a Haitian protest in New York City. So in, in learning about the new disease of AIDS back in the 1980s, they talked about the four H's. And that's how you knew who had AIDS or who, who you should be careful for. It was um, homosexuals, hemophiliacs, heroin users, and Haitians. Those are the people that um, had to do with, with the AIDS epidemic. And it was taught, by myself included, that the virus came from Africa to Haiti and spread from there through drug use and, illic and illicit drug trades and, and that from Haiti. There's a lot of movies coming out this week, and let me tell you why you should avoid them. It's time for Pre-Critic. Kicking things off with is a uh, basically a remake of a childhood classic for uh, the people who've created the Minions. So Benedict Cumberbatch will be portraying the Grinch in what some people are calling a kids movie. Watch this kids movie. Connect with kids, um, but... Be aware that even the youngest of us can really understand how 90s angst turns into a kids movie for kids. So slapstick falling, bright colors, and most importantly, gift from this movie is to shut your kids up for about an hour and a half. You know, keep them distracted so you can go see this next movie, which is a World War II epic. Uh, this weekend is the 100th anniversary of the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. But we're going to completely forget about that because we're going to go talk about World War II. Overlord Floor is a ragtag group of soldiers behind enemy lines during D-Day. Sounds familiar. Uh, as they discover friendship and love because reasons. Anyways, Kurt Russell's son is in this movie where he plays a jerk and others follow him to hell and back in this not Cloverfield, but maybe Cloverfield cinematic universe. Hey guys, I watched the original trilogy when it, when it was out, and it was playing at the Wilma, and it's very just like low key and everything. But if you haven't seen, this, uh, seen the Swedish version of these movies, you should try to check out The Girl in the Spider's Web, colon, a dragon tattoo story, colon, I don't know. Uh, so basically, the whole idea of this is that it's always been kind of like a cloak and dagger type mystery movie, but now it's kind of uh, advertised as one of those movies where it's just like, if you don't stop this person, there's going to be a lot of explosions and bang, boom, boom, action film. Even though like, it goes everything against what uh, Stieg Larsson was all about. He's the author of this. Um, so... Join uh, Angelina Jolie. No, uh, Numi Replace. Uh, no, Ru uh, Rooney Mara. No, um, Claire Foy. Yes, uh, in a movie about what people call the female James Bond because reasons. Um, why go to the movies when you can go rewatch Hackers with Angelina Jolie and Fisher Stevens? It's a movie. And speaking of movies, we have a movie for you guys, and it is pretty awesome. It, it is the very first premiere of Meadow Hills uh, Flagship Friday. So we're kicking things off with uh, the International uh, Thumb Wrestling Tournament West or whatever. So anyways, here's this. Aliyah put here at the International West Side Thumb Wrestling Contest with the prize of $5 million. People all over the world are coming just to wrestle with their two thumbs. I may be an announcer, but I'm also in the tournament. I'm gonna win. Our second contestant is Rocky. Our third contestant is Keith. And our last one, returning from last year, is Shadow Thumbs. First up is Rocky and Shadow Thumbs. I want a good clean thumb wrestle with no spitting and no punching or kicking. 
but distractions are allowed. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war! All I've wanted ever since I was a boy was my shoe. Because a hooded villain met me in this life. I'm not gonna lose to you. I need to find my shoe! Huh, if only you knew. You took my shoe. I recognize that smile. When I win this round, give me my shoe or I will beat you up. <laughs> Fine. But if you lose, I get to take some of yours. I have to win for the sake of my shoe. Ah! Ah, fun pin overdrive. <laughs> Now it's for our deal. No! That was my thumb wrestling thumb! Ah! Next up in the bracket, we have Keith against me! I'm gonna win. Okay, I won a good, clean thumb wrestle, and don't worry, I won't cheat. I'm sorry, but I have to win this. One, two, three, four, I declare a thumb war! Oh, that's been three seconds. Good game. You too. I'm sorry about your finger though. Maybe next year. Next up is the champions. There would have been a semifinal, but only four people showed up. but I want a nice, clean, fun wrestle. And since I'm not salty about losing, I'm going to be extra fair. I want no lollygagging, no kicking, and no punching. Are you ready to rumble? One, two, three, four. I declare a thumb war! Uh, you're pretty good. Yeah. She's using two hands. It's fine to me. Now I'm gonna use two hands. Foul! What? You're not allowed to use two hands. But she is. Well, I don't want to hear it. Person who crushed my dreams of beating this tournament. No, I'll never give my family new thumbs. I'm sorry, family. No, you can do it, family member. I uh, had a clear relationship with as familiar. After all, can't you see I don't have thumbs? But you can do it. I believe in your true thumb wrestling power. Just look how far you've come. You have heart. And, and, and you can do it. Okay, bye. Now with the pride of my family, I can win. She's defeated? City Council time. So let's talk about some City Council things. Um, so the City of Missoula, uh, they're doing some things in the city. And one of the things that they're doing is uh, Partnership Health Center and the City of Missoula is working to on uh, basically creating a house navigator. Um, and this job is basically finding people uh, who are at high risk homelessness and who have issues trying to find them places to stay and also keeping them in those places. So uh, housing navigator are... Uh, very crucial, according to Aaron Pian. And here is Aaron Pian. 
Uh, during our annual coordinated entry system evaluation, those same partners identified the lack of a dedicated housing navigator as a significant barrier in effectively housing coordinated entry participants. Um, Zula Housing Authority, Authority specifically identified that as a primary reason why the individuals who move through the coordinated entry system and were actually paired with a housing voucher, so they were walking in the door with that rental payment and were still not getting access to housing because they didn't have have someone who is savvy who could help them navigate those systems and advocate on behalf of them to the landlords in our community. Uh, housing navigators play that key role in identifying and securing housing for homeless individuals. Uh, and we worked through our office, Housing and Community Development, worked through several potential options to fund this community-wide position, including a general fund request to this body. Um, due to budgetary constraints, that request was not funded for the current fiscal year. And given the necessity of this position and having an effective coordinated entry system, uh, our office is allocating the remaining Title I program income funding that we have to fund a one-year contract to provide this service. All right, so um, it's a process, and through the uh, admin finance, they're looking to uh, be put on the docket. Uh, uh, sometimes having a place to go isn't the same as having a place to stay, and having uh, by having a navigator can ha actually help people find a place and actually stay in these pl places that best suits them. The housing navigator would be a key member of the CE CES team that connects homeless individuals with services and housing. The navigator will... Uh, be assigned to homeless individuals identified, identified as high priority within the CES and serves uh, Missoula County. Erin Pian goes on to explain some of the woes that she's had to deal with with uh, some of the folks who have been in and out of the Pavarella Center for 10 years and um, who found one of them dead on the street at one point because they just couldn't help them. Financial implications for this for hiring um, set, uh, said people, a housing navigator, is $60,000 fund allocation from the uh, housing a group Title I program income account. These funds are restricted to use outlined in the federal regulations. Um, Aaron talks about the uh, problem with having limited services and uh, some of the risks associated with that as well. So the difficulty with a one-year contract or even potentially with a two-year contract is we're, we're building a system uh, and we're creating the support for our larger coordinated entry system that, that may not be continued. So at the end of one year, at the end of two years, this key position that the system will become reliant upon to house our most difficult to house homeless citizens um, will come to a halt if this position goes away. And so our hope is that we can use this as a, um, I hesitate to say pilot project because that proves effectiveness and we already know this works. So perhaps maybe a demonstration project uh, and get this position underway. Um, but it, it is imperative that this position be funded in subsequent years if we want the coordinated entry system to continue to house individuals um, who are at highest risk. Um, All right, so that was Aaron Pian once again. And that was the last quote I have from Edmund and Finance. Um, of course, um, a lot of times there are a lot of services in place for people who are vets. If you're at the Pavarella Center and you're a veteran, they have programs in place that actually house veterans as well, but they don't necessarily have navigating housing uh, personnel to help people who are not a veteran, uh, basically achieve homes and all that stuff. And veteran or not, I mean, this whole point is to basically be able to house people. And they also mention this, meaning that it costs a lot more to uh, hospitalize and... Um, put these individuals in temporary housing and then to find them a more semi-permanent residence that they can live out of. And with the navigator, house navigator, they're not going to just stop working with them as soon as they get a place. They want to continue working with these people and also offer social services to do this. But this will be on the docket and, it, and the item will be returned to the budget committee meeting, which will start. Uh, pretty soon because they're going to be talking about the uh, fiscal year 2020 budget um, pretty much coming up because they already uh, settled on the uh, fiscal year 2019 budget just last summer with that seven hour and 45 minute meeting.
Okay, so let's move on uh, with land use and planning. In 2016, uh, many community members and uh, concerns can be, uh, concerned citizens became, uh, began raising questions about how to achieve high quality design in building environment while encouraging innovation in design and construction. We're talking about the mega house near Bonner Park again. But this time, it's about more than downtown surrounding areas and other neighborhoods uh, beyond the university district. So uh, Lavelle Means talks about the, what the city is doing to help overlay and how they are adjusting to uh, an ever-growing downtown area. See in a case where somebody either programmatically or, you know, for other reasons is uh, not coming all the way to those standards, uh, there is a flexible component in there called that design variation and somebody can still make a case for um, an element or some of these elements that they're not meeting all the way to. So it gets us to the ability to go to, I'm not at 45% glazing, but I'm at 40 and I've got this and this going on as well and we have the ability to review that um, internally, administratively, to say, I get that, you're meeting the intent in another way, let's move forward. So I think that's what you'll see, movement towards the design, getting a lot closer to it, maybe not always, and that's why we built in that flexibility component. And one of the uh, concerns about many uh uh, council members, along with some of the concerned citizens, is that this is going to put a, a strain on people's um, dream house. So you buy private property, whatever you put on your private property is basically your right to do it because it's your property. So that being said, many things that the city is trying to do is have a flexibility component to help ed uh, um, adhere to uh, make it easier for p building standards and um, they, through the meeting, they show a bunch of examples of construction and buildings off of 3rd Street, off of Broadway. There's semi-residential because um, a lot, there's a lot of residential places in the downtown Missoula area that has slowly grown into more commercial um, quasi-tavern type zones. There's a lot of exempt special districts that they're trying to figure out um, because towns change and ideas change. And our Missoula's uh, big deal is they're trying to find more parking, high-density uh, housing, uh, just to try to uh, deal with the uh, overpopulation, um, the uh, increasing population that is Missoula, Montana. Okay, so some of the issues brought up uh, was the Verizon building off of Madison Broadway. It's really bright neon red at night, which has affected people in the neighboring neighborhoods. Uh, there's... Uh, apartment complex nearby, there's a couple of houses in the area, uh, but a lot of people are uh, really uh, annoyed by the bright light from the Verizon building. There's also a couple other uh, buildings off of 3rd Street, um, new construction that just kind of like put right there off of 3rd Street. There's a lot of residentials up in that general area. There's been a lot of improvements, a lot of uh, what people are saying are gentrification. So the 3rd Street uh, kind of neighborhood, 3rd Street Russell neighborhoods particularly are one of the uh, bigger concerns. So they're trying, uh, the city of Missoula is trying to figure out a way to help do this. And uh, Brian Van Lossberg also reflects on this process that it's about communication. You know, a dollar extra cost for a, a place like the Verizon building would mean it, it wouldn't happen. I think that's uh, ridiculous. And, and the fact that we weren't able to um, drive a conversation about what could have happened there was the most frustrating aspect to me, which is I just trying to uh, shine a light on why I'm interested in highlighting this kind of process of partnership um, in design, because I, I think that's important, and I think it's a, it can yield a very reasonable compromise that benefits both the developer um, as well as, as the community. And now I will get off my soapbox. All right, so what's happening now is that the city is going to be opening a public hearing. So the whole point of this meeting, you should check it out. It's, it's long. It goes for about 48 minutes to kind of get the whole thing. Um, the, the meeting itself is an hour and 25 minutes. It goes further into the brass tacks of the overlay and some of the uh, special districts about, you know, exempt kind of deals they're trying to work with in this as well. But the first 48 minutes of the uh, land 
land use and planning meeting is very important because they go through uh, picture examples of some of the buildings that people have complained about in the Missoula area because uh, they're just like almost not even a block or half a block away from residential neighborhoods just off of uh, Third and Russell. So there's a lot of interesting things happening for sure, but the design excellence overlays for the downtown are meant to uh, accommodate pedestrians, motorists, parking, and just how boulevards can be put in place and how close is too close to the street. Um, many places are trying to figure out ways to have safety for pedestrians. Um, 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 but many things are happening in the city and they want to make sure that businesses that are coming and buying properties in the neighborhoods are good neighbors. Um, but which is what our Missoula is trying to figure out. Um, the, the motion is up for public hearing on December 17th. So mark your calendars for December 17th, which they will have uh, consultants who have worked on getting these programs and the proposal and also working on this data analyst study about some of the buildings and concerned citizens as well. They can answer and clarify this downtown overlay for peoples. Um, to watch this meeting in full, you can go to uh, the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful amazing website that you guys can use. You go to your government, you click on Agenda Webcast Minutes, it brings you to this website right here. I mean this link, sorry. And it shows you a whole bunch of agenda items, minutes, MP3, MP4s. Hey, you can listen to it in your car, you can download it, all that stuff, all this and more. But of course, you can always go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local source for everything Missoula Community Access Television from your government to your public access and is a great resource for anybody who wants to learn about what uh, public media has to offer. All right, guys, that pretty much uh, does it for that. I got some uh, events that are kicking off this weekend because there's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, a bunch, a couple play, I think a couple plays. I'm not sure. I'll, ha I'll, 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 I'll clarify more of that later on. But without further ado, here is a new art uh, installation. Um, this is Stephen Hunt at the Missoula Art Museum. And when I come back, I'll talk about events. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's kick things off with a little bit of events that are happening this week as well. Your first event is a whole bunch of camps. Uh, Missoula Insectarium, you can go to MissoulaButterflyHouse.org for more information about uh, that. And they're doing it from 9 a.m. to about 4 p.m. They have some pre-care and after-care available for some of the kids. One of their usually things is that your kid must be potty trained. Um, <laughs> MCT Play in a Day Camp is happening today. School's out today and uh, you want to know what you do with your kids, MCT or Missoula Insectarium. Jeez, why didn't I burp during the commercial break? <laughs> okay, so the kids are away. You guys can check out the uh, holiday market, which is going to be at the Holy Spirit uh, Church. Sorry, I'm, I'm totally not going to even try. Uh, this annual holiday market at Holy Spirit Church features antiques, vintage um, crafts, jewelry, art, grizz, and holiday gifts, much more. And this happens from 9 to 4 a.m. this morning and also Saturday from 9 to 4. Huge inventory and a lot of prizes. And also speaking, they have a, a St. Paul Lutheran Church annual bazaar. Uh, antique, um, vintage, uh, newly and gently used handmade quilts, um, hats, mittens, baby items, homemade specialty jellies, jams, re, uh, re, 
um, lots of Christmas decorations, homemade Christmas goodies, um, and um, St. Paul ha uh, Holiday Cafe, have lunch while you shop, and then they have handmade soup and pie. They make the soup with their hands. Um, Can the Cats and a variety of locations in Missoula. Can the Cats have kicked off this year leading up to the uh, Cat Grizz game. Um, Missoula hasn't really won the Can the Cat uh, uh, um, food drive in a, in a while, uh, from what I hear. Um, usually Bozeman is really good, and the Cats are really good at gathering a bunch of dry goods and foods. But you, if you want to beat them, if you want to provide foods for uh, families in needs, um, um, you can go to Missoula Food Bank. Um, Good Food Store, Carl Tyler Chevrolet, Orange Street Food Farm, the YMCA Warden's Market, and Swift Building in Missoula to donate all your dry goods and non-perishables. Um, Tiny Tales and Storytime is happening at a Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30. Every, pretty much every day at 10.30, Missoula Public Library hosts or sponsors Tiny Tales and Storytime, which allows kids to learn reading and learn how to book and all sorts of uh, things and possibly grammar. I don't know. I didn't go there. And look at me. <laughs> Hands-on science. Exploring the cosmos. Spectrum Discovery Center starting at 11 a.m. At this discovery bench, they'll be exploring the cosmos and diving into the world of astronomy. Enjoy different planets in our solar system, star constellations, and what else lies in the universe. And also from 11 to 12, they'll be having a special guest, Lee Joyce. Uh, Lee is a graduate student at the University of Montana where she focuses on the influence of natural dis disturbances and community structure on amphibian parasite dynamics. Ooh. And also in the makerspace is spinning time. Tops. So you get to use a 3D printer to make spinning tops. Yarns and watercolor is at the Museum of Public Library at 12. Um, you can do yarns where you can stitch and make your own clothing. Hmm, that'd be cool. Or you can just watercolor where you can um, draw in some stuff. Uh, if you've ever seen me watercolor, it basically it looks like a five-year-old drew it. Uh, Cribbage and Briz at Missoula Senior Center starting at 12.30 p.m. It's the best dance floor in Missoula at the Missoula Senior Center, and you get to enjoy some lunch, have some company, and destroy uh, other grandmas at Cribbage and or Bridge. Uh, Festival of Trees, wreath decorating workshop. Festival of Trees are kicking off, and they've been going on for a while now. You, uh, they, uh, part of this is the, at the Missoula Public Library, they have a wreath decorating. Learn how to decorate a wreath for the holidays and donate your creation to a worthy cause when the Library Makerspace partners with the Missoula Downtown Association for the Festival of Trees wreath decorating workshop. So lead it up until December. They have a fest, uh, they have uh, the parade uh, festival of trees. They have a parade of lights. They have all sorts of things happening. Missoula Live. We had uh, um, a bunch of guests from the downtown partnership come on to Joel and Kim Anderson's show, and they talked about this and more. So you can check all that out. It'll be airing to pretty much every night at 5 p.m. on channel 190. All right, Art Show at the Zach kicking off at 3.30 p.m. this afternoon. New works by Kim Brown, Campbell, and Catherine Ross. This show will be on display in the Zach's main gallery all of November. And they have open hours Monday through Friday from 11 to 6. And works can be viewed during these hours. Family Friendly Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. It's a great way to get all sorts of hangout time with your family and kids and have drink specials. Family Friendly Fridays. Um, Hellgate High School School Play. We have always lived in the castle. Last night was their opening night. They'll be doing it tonight and tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. at Hellgate High School's fall production of We Have Always Lived in the Castle! Exclamation point. Performances are um, $7. Um, doors open at 7 p.m. Shows at 7.30. Turn the Cirque Illuminates the Mundane. Mask Studio is doing a show all weekend long with matinees at 2 in the on Saturday and I believe on Sunday. Uh, Mask original production uh, titled Turn debuted, uh, debuts tonight on the 10th and the 11th. Creativity has been a fragment thought for a watchful eye and the machine never blinks. Perhaps it is time to uh, world took a turn. Join them as they spin a tale of ordinary people remember what it's like to dream again, a story told through movement and circus art. So they have aerial silks, um, all sorts of fun, little, uh, fun, amazing things at the Massachusetts Studio, kicking off tonight at 7 p.m. But if you're interested in going out and about tonight as well, they have Dead Hipster. If you like 90s music, you get to enjoy some late 90s music at the Badlander starting at 
9 p.m. Cash for Junkers at Union Club. And the Mad Hat Volume 6 is going to be electronic DJ music at the Top Hat tonight as well. So those are some of your events for the Friday. I'll have your Saturday events after another art clip for you guys. Yes, I have this art clip. And then I have no more clips after this. I'm just going to basically, um, after this art clip, I'm going to be talking until I end the show. So <laughs> you know, we're almost there. Baba Booey, now it's time for Saturday events. Uh, <laughs> I'm not as funny as I think I am. Anyways, Western Montana Dirt Derby. It's uh, it's a state, uh, it's the um, Lubrick State Experimental Forest. I totally butchered that name, by the way. Uh, the Montana Mountain Mushers and Bitterroot Mushers are excited to announce the inaugural running of the Western Montana Dirt Derby Dryland Dog Race to be held November 10th and 11th. Basically, you get a bunch of cute dogs pulling you in a race. Um, or, you know, you have, uh, so here are some of the the, uh, the classes. There's a six dog and four dog cart. Uh, you got a two uh, dog bike jaw, so basic, and or scooter. So basically, you have two dogs pulling your bike. And one dog bike jaw and scooter, as well as the uh, can across, can across. So can across is where you basically tie a, a body strap to a dog and the dog runs as you run too. So the dog is pulling you as you're running. There are also novice and junior categories. Races begin at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. And this is going to be, I believe, going to be around Greeno Park, I want to say. Um, but you can find out more information at Bitterroot uh, Mushers at Hotmail.com. Yes, Hotmail.com. <laughs> Uh, but, of course, you can go to bitterrootmushers.org for more information. Grace UMH, Harvest Bazaar and Luncheon. Grace United Methodist Church, they're doing a bazaar and they have lunch. Bazaars, hey, it's time for the bazaar. And November is a great place to get a bunch of handmade knickknacks. Um, you can um, talk about the craft and all sorts of wonderful things with that as well. And they're going to be doing this from 8.30 a.m. to about maybe a little noon since it is a luncheon. So you can check all that out and more. University of Montana is doing the ultimate craft fair. Uh, and this happens at the University Center. Uh, they usually do at the University Center. And you can get a head start on your holiday shop at the largest craft sale in western Montana. There's another craft, sh uh, craft fair at Lolo School. So if you're at a Lolo, you're watching this, hey, Lolo, tomorrow morning at Lolo School, 9 a.m., 50 vendors, polka dot patties will be there selling food. Polka dot patties is the one that has the deep fried Oreos. There you go. I'm sold. Anyways, International Games Week, <laughs> game day. Um, kicking off at the Missoula Public Library on um, Saturday at 10 a.m. In celebration of the annual International Games Week, they have video games, tabletop games, snacks, and Dungeon and Dragon character creation station. Participants can also play Mario Kart on the original giant projector screen. Board games from the library's collection will be available for free play or checkout, and gamers are welcome to bring their own games to share. Meets in the library room 10 to 5 p.m. all day Saturday at the Missoula Public Library. Adult Art Workshop, How Do Artists Respond? Missoula Art Museum, starting at 11 a.m. Join photographer David J. Spear in the exploration of ideas behind Philip Gustin's controversial 1969 painting, Cigar. 
Augustine created this work shortly after he rejected the uh, limitations of abstract expressionism and returned to figurative painting. And you can check all that out at the MAM. It's an adult, it's adult art workshop. How do artists respond to art? And this is $30 for members, $27 for uh, $30 for non-members, $27 for MAM members. And you can visit their website, MizzleArtMuseum.org. You can call them at 728-0447 to register. Again, that number is 728-0447. F uh, free admission, free expression at the Missouri Art Museum. They uh, provide, um, don they want donations, they do art auctions, and they're always looking for people. So it's free to look at the art, but you always have to pay to buy the art. And speaking of art, Hey, your kid is interested in doing some stop motion animation every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. here at our MCAT studios at 500 North Higgins Suite 105. MCAT hosts Saturday drop-ins. You can go to MCAT.org for more information, but Saturday drop-ins are a great way for kids to create using stop animation, videography, and editing with Funka Pro 10. It's wonderful. It's great. I'm here. Need I tell you more? Uh, no, I don't. I have more about Hellgate Elementary PTA Glow Run. Hellgate Elementary School, my alma mater, uh, <laughs> elementary school, is excited to host their first free run fundraiser. Fun run fundraiser. This is an untimed 5K run fundraiser for Hellgate Elementary. Participants will create, collect bracelets at glow stations located throughout the school campus and end the run walk with a rainbow of glowing bracelets. So you can do an online reservation at runwildmissoula.org. You can click, uh, click on Hellgate Elementary PTA Glow Run or visit the website at hellgate.k12.mt.us. You can find out more information by just looking up Glow Run Missoula. Um, but, hey, those are pretty much things ending up on Saturday. If you guys are interested in doing some Saturday night, late night events, they got Absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander DJ Music. They got Camp at Top Hat Lounge. It's a camp with an extra A in the middle. Um, and it's folk music. Gladys Friday at the Union Club, which is going to be some jam dance music. And, of course, if you want to forget all that, you can go to a Narconics Anonymous meeting at the University of Montana starting at 8.15. Think about it. Um, <laughs> But we got some Sunday events because it is Veterans Day on Sunday. Um, so remember all those who have lost fighting for our freedoms, but also celebrate the end of the Great War, otherwise known as the War to End All Wars, which was the first war to end all wars since we did have World War II some odd uh, 30, 20 years later. Um, so the 100th anniversary celebration of the end of World War I also known as the Great War, Heritage Hall at the at Fort Missoula, starting at 11 a.m. to about 4 p.m. They have a bunch of services and a bunch of uh, history and about Montana's involvement in World War One. And in the state of Montana, 10% uh, of the population went to go fight in uh, World War One, which is one of the highest uh, involvements in the nation. Um, audition Calendar Girls. MCT starting at 12.30 p.m. and it pretty much goes on to about 3.30 p.m. Missoula Community Theater will host an open audition for Calendar Girls on Sunday. And this is this uh, show that succeeds. Elf, which will be playing, uh, Elf will be playing in uh, end of November and most of December um, in Elf the Musical. And also Calendar Girls is a, based on this true story and is one of the most popular plays in British history and was made into a movie to raise money to buy a new couch for their hospital waiting room. Best friends Annie and Chris decide to pose nude for a calendar. The calendar not only raises money, but also plenty of eyebrows and spirits. All right, so those are some of the... Um, those are some of the events that are happening as well. They have a film festival happening at the Wilma. Ignite your passion for ad adventure, action, and travel. Banff Center uh, M Mountain Film Festival World Tour uh, will exhilarate you with an amazing big screen story when it comes to the Wilma. And this is one of their 550 communities that they tour around the globe. They'll be here in Missoula, 7 p.m. at the Wilma on Sunday. So if you want more information about all these and more, there's always a bunch of um, events that are happening. And I always kind of give you the ones that kind of stand out to me. And uh, there's, always, there's always a bunch of yoga on there. I don't need to um, give them business. Um, MissoulaEvents.net, um, where you can find out more information about your events in Missoula. Hey, w what kind of events are happening in Missoula? Uh, what's that website called? EventsMissoula.net? No, it's MissoulaEvents.net. Find out more about that and more. But of course, if you want to find out more about MCAT, you go to MCAT.org. Winter days, 
You can signups have started. If your kid is not doing anything just after Christmas and you have to get back to work right after Christmas on the 26th through the 28th, th uh, Wednesday through Friday, we have uh, camps from 9 a.m. to about 3 p.m. We got pre-care starting around 8.30 a.m. It's just a fun way to kids to hang out and create short films and movies. It's a movie making kind of short camp. They have some stop animation options as well. If you want to learn more about me, you go to Wake Up Missoula. .wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice for me to write it out twice. And I'm too cheap to buy the uh, licensee for wakeupmissoula.com. <laughs> but of course, you can uh, Google me. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, be sure to subscribe, like, follow. Three different things, which basically mean the same thing. Um, but thanks, guys, for joining me. Um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Check out our Saturday drop-ins. It happens every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Kids aged 9 to about 13 do some stop animation. So for without further ado, uh, I'm Scott Ramph, and I was your host for Wake Up Missoula, and I'll be back next Wednesday to talk about more stuff uh, like I do. All right, thanks, guys, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs>